Hi, in this video, I'm going to walk you through the speed test and some of the challenges you may have when you're trying to do a speed test with the RAIN network. Now, I've got this product, which is the 5G standard, which says that it comes at 30 megabits per second. However, just so you're aware that the router, in terms of my installation, can give me up to, well, well over 200 megabits per second, but that doesn't mean I'm going to experience that because I've only paid for the 30 megabits per second option. Now, even having done the 30 megabits per second option am i getting 30 megabits per second right so here is a speed test which i've done and you can see that i got a very low download rate now i'm just going to do the test again in real time just to show you and you can see there it says rain so i am definitely on the rain network and you can see this is a very poor test look at that for So look at that download rate, 3.56, and look at that upload. That is definitely not what I'm paying for. However, please be aware that there are some user aspects which might be influencing these poor download rates. The first one is, how long has your web browser been open for? Now, why that is important is because I'm just going to open another web browser, and I'm making this test straight after the other one. And uh, as you can see, look at the difference in the download rate. So what do you notice? I've just opened a new web browser. Okay, so this one was using Microsoft Edge and I got 25 while I had a browser that has been open overnight. This computer has been running overnight and look at that 3.56, terrible result here while here considerably better. Right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this browser completely, let it uh, clear the cache. You can actually manually clear the cache. The cache is information that has been recently stored in the browser. Now I'm going to reopen Firefox, for example, and I'm going to do the test again. Look, that was the old result, and now let's do the test again. And immediately you can see I'm getting a similar result to the other web browser. So that's just showing that that is one of the problems that people are having is that they are reporting very low download speeds, but actually just uh, refresh your browser. There's nothing wrong with uh, using Firefox. There's nothing wrong with using Edge. It's just that sometimes, even with uh, some websites, it remembers a password. Maybe you've changed your password. You can't log in. Shut down the web browser, clear the cache, and relaunch the speed test. Now, the next thing is doing the speed test, whether on Wi-Fi or over the hardwired Ethernet connection. Now, I've got a very detailed video explaining uh, the details about how to set up your Huawei router, but I'm just going to show you now. You can see I've got a dedicated link here, and it is actually a gigabit link. So if you have a look here, um, this connectivity is one gigabits per second. So make sure that the uh, connection you have to your router is fast. Or if you're going through a switch on the way to your router, just make sure that it's gigabit and not 100 megabit. That is going to act as a bottleneck if it is below one gigabit per second. Because as you can see, if I do the rain speed test, um, I'm going to be well over 100 megabits per second. And if my Ethernet connection was only 100 megabits per second, then that would be a problem. So as you can see, I've got gigabits and I'm definitely not having any bottlenecks. So this is the true reflection of the Huawei router, which is installed on top of my roof. Okay, so now I'm going to initiate a problem. What I'm going to do is I'm now going to connect via Wi-Fi, which has a fair signal, not an amazing signal. So I'm going to disconnect and reconnect via Wi-Fi. So here I have my Wi-Fi. I'm going to enable it. And I'm actually going to disable my Ethernet port, which means that my computer has no way of connecting to the Internet unless it goes via the Wi-Fi. Only via Wi-Fi. You can see my Ethernet is disabled. I happen to have two Ethernet ports on this laptop. So what is happening now is I'm only going to connect via Wi-Fi. So I'm going to go and find the access point. There it is. This is the Huawei router and I'm now connecting to it. You can see that the signal strength is not very good because the Huawei router is quite far away from this laptop. For example, the Huawei router is, uh, is actually on a mast on top of a roof. So it is not very good. And now when I do the speed test, you're going to see the problem. So now you can see it's finally connected, but it did have some difficulty. And look at the speed there. It says 43.3 megabits per second. 
Now, if you are in this situation and you do a speed test, look at the result. So you can see that it is immediately a massive problem, although the problem isn't the router. The problem is the connection via the air from the router to me, the laptop here, the end user. So you can see these are very poor download and upload speeds. And even if I go and do the rain speed test of the router, you can see I'm getting still a very poor response. So this is why you've got to be careful how you do these speed tests because you might get a very poor result and assume that it's the network when in actuality it is your Wi-Fi link because remember that you're still connecting via Wi-Fi. So the speed test is actually also a measure of your link between your laptop and your router and then the router to the network. So look at that. 0.7, 1.7 because of this poor Wi-Fi link. So I think I've got the message across here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to the LAN, the gigabit connection, and just quickly show you that I haven't done any funny business here. So all I'm going to do is now I'm going to disable my Wi-Fi. So now I've removed myself from the Huawei router's Wi-Fi. And now I'm going to re-enable myself in terms of the Ethernet connection, which I know for sure is a gigabit connection because I actually ran that cable myself and I did a test and I actually do get a gigabit. So the cable is gigabit. And remember that some people may not wire the cable properly or they use the wrong cable. And in my video, I explained that about how to set this up correctly. Now, there we go. It is gigabit. You can see there one gigabit per second. And you can even bring up the uh, performance manager. And you can see there is my Ethernet uh, Realtek um, controller. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the speed test. Right. So the only difference was now I'm connecting over Ethernet. And there you can see the Ethernet uh, response there. You can see um, send, receive. So definitely a better result just simply because I'm now connected directly instead of via Wi-Fi. And that is one of the reasons why when you are setting up the RAIN link, it says to you, please use Ethernet and not Wi-Fi. And if you want to see the speed test now, throughput rate, the, the one that I'm going to have access to in terms of the end user. Remember, I've only purchased the uh, 30 megabit per second uh, product. You can see there it's coming through again. So obviously the router on the roof can go up to over 200. But remember, I'm only paying for the 30. So that's why mine is kind of clamped here. Right now, just to close with the video, I know that a lot of people are forced to use Wi-Fi. They can't run cables and things like that. So I'm just going to give you a few tips. The first one is try and log into your uh, device. Uh, the default is 192.168.8.1. So under the wireless LAN tab, you will see that you can change the frequency band from 2.4G to 5G, depending if your wireless radio or your Wi-Fi chip on your cell phone or your laptop, whatever you're using, is capable of that frequency range and you can adjust that the next thing you can do is adjust the frequency band you can adjust the channel separation and also the power obviously if you have it on sleep it's going to be a lower power then there's normal then there's impale i'm not 100 percent sure what the word impale means i'm assuming it's more of a focused wi-fi but uh, when I did try the Impel and the normal, I got very similar results. And the user manual for the product doesn't actually ex explain what they mean when they say Impel. And then what you do is you come to your Wi-Fi control panel and you can actually see the signal strength or you can see it here when it is connected here. And at the moment, it's Ethernet. If it was Wi-Fi, you would see your Wi-Fi details over here in terms of the uh, the throughput rate. Right, so I'm now just going to disable my, my Ethernet and connect via the Wi-Fi and just show you the signal strength. It starts off very high because remember that it ramps up in order to uh, get a good signal. And then unfortunately, it will start going down again. But as you can see, it goes back down. That is the nature of Wi-Fi. It does fluctuate. So you'll find that even throughout the day, you might get better uh, signal strength and then worse signal strength. So here's another tip. The more people, the more wireless devices that are accessing that same wireless access point, 
the worse it is. So if you've got your cell phone on your table, which is, which is also connecting via Wi-Fi, well, that's going to reduce your throughput. And if you've got other users in your office or your home also connecting via Wi-Fi, that's also going to reduce your throughput. So there you can see, look at that. Now it's ramped up again, and then it will drop down, and it will do this constantly. And that is unfortunately the nature of Wi-Fi. You can see, look at that. It's a good signal now, and it's dropped down to 13. Why? Because there's other people accessing this Wi-Fi at the same time. So that's unfortunately how Wi-Fi is. It's like a highway with no lanes. People can just slot in and people have to move and adapt and it's you get a quite a lot of bottlenecks because of the nature of the Wi-Fi signaling CSMA CA which stands for carrier sense multiple access uh, collision avoidance while Ethernet uses collision detection. Anyway don't worry about that. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm also going to recommend that you can get a something called a Wi-Fi extender. You can also get an additional antenna. And the best option is as close as possible to the device will get the best signal. Now, obviously, that is a bit of a catch-22 because if your Wi-Fi router is sitting on your roof, you can't get, you can't sit with your uh, laptop on your roof every time you want to use the internet. So that requires you to then maybe get a Wi-Fi access point, which will also help you. What it can do is it can provide a Wi-Fi in different parts of your business or your home, giving you a much faster throughput. You could get this easily to 150 megabits per second if you use Wi-Fi access points. Okay, and finally, just to close off, what I did is I went as close as possible to the Wi-Fi router. You can see, look at my signal strength, 135. I can see the router, so that means I'm in line of sight. And that's the best way to deal with Wi-Fi. If you can see the access point, you're going to have the best signal. And just going through the motions one more time, here's the speed test. I'm connecting via Wi-Fi. You can see the Wi-Fi link. Look at the throughput. And this is only because I can see the router. So please just be aware before you start falling into a panic about speed tests, just check your own setup so that you can uh, so that you can have the confidence to know is it the rain network, is it your laptop or computer, is it your Wi-Fi link, or is it just bad signal? All right, so I thank you for watching and cheers.